Welcome to the video. My name is Alex and on this channel I cover all things Azure. In today's video, we are going to dive into a topic that might seem simple but can have huge impacts on your Azure management. And if you don't pay attention to this, things can get really awkward really fast. So today's topic is five things to consider when naming your Azure resources. And whether you're new to Azure or a seasoned pro, let's uncover some naming wisdom. Let's start with the number one. Use Microsoft's recommended abbreviations. Many of you like to use some sort of abbreviations to describe what the resource is. And it is quite common, for example, to abbreviate resource group as RG or SQL database as SQL DB. However, there is really no need to reinvent the wheel and come up with your own abbreviations, since Microsoft already provides us with their example abbreviations for all the Azure resources. And in my opinion, it is very good to go with those since they keep your names consistent and aligned with Azure's language. Number two, globally unique resource names. Some Azure resources like storage accounts and SQL servers require a globally unique resource name. This is mainly due to the fact that these resources have publicly accessible endpoints. And easy way to explain is that these resource names will be used in the URL that allows access to these resources. Number three, Common identifier. Incorporating a common identifier in your resource name that belong to the same set is like a thread that ties them together. Whether it is your project's name, platform abbreviation, application ID, or some type of combination, it is your resources way to say, I belong here. And along with the resource group, this makes it easier to see which resources belong to which project. Also, this common identifier helps with our previous point by helping us to make sure that our resource names are globally unique when required. Number four, resource name length limits. Azure resources have different length restrictions when it comes to their names. Be mindful of this and do not come up with the naming conventions that go over boundaries of some resource name lengths. Also, Microsoft is kind enough to provide us with the documentation that tells the resource name length limit for each resource. Also, as a bonus point, this same document describes what are the valid characters that you can use in the resource names. So keep it snappy, keep it meaningful and within the limits. Number five, environment identifiers. It is like putting a finishing touch on your resource names. When operating in a professional Azure environment, it is good to indicate the environment which those resources belong to. So it is good to incorporate environment identifiers as part of your naming conventions. And if you ask me, I would highly recommend to place it as a last thing in your resource names. My reasoning for this is that when you use infrastructure as a code or need to programmatically parse out the environment identifier, then it is way easier and reliable to do so when it is at the end of the resource name. So incorporate environment identifiers like dev, test and prod as part of your naming convention and preferably put those as last thing in your resource names. To recap, we covered five important aspects to consider when naming your Azure resources. These tips should help you to craft your own naming conventions to your Azure environments. Remember, smart naming strategy can make managing your Azure resources a lot easier. If you found these insights valuable, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more Azure tips, tricks and tutorials. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video.